Bruchim uh, Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Um, the lecture tonight, we gave a lecture a while back. The question everybody asks of why do, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? But today we'd like to talk about the opposite, because that also is a question that people have. Why do good things happen to bad people? You know, when we look around, you know, it looks like a lot of bad people are driving nice cars and living in big homes and seem to have plenty of money and children and uh, they're blessed with good health. They seem to have run the table. Uh, they do exactly what they want and they don't acknowledge God. They don't serve God in any special way. And yet, they um, seem to be doing well. So how do we really understand this? So in the first chapter of uh, Tehillim, of Psalms, it says very quickly, very, very obviously, the Pasuk says, about, first it talks about uh, the uh, Ashrei Haish, happy is the man that doesn't go in the counsel of the wicked. And it says that the wicked, ki im kamochis den ruach, that they'll be like the chaff that's driven by the wind. So, even though we see, or seem to see, that people who are evil, people who are not righteous, people who do bad things seem to be successful, you need to follow it all the way down and watch it till the end. For one, the truth of the matter is that stuff, having a lot of possessions, does not make a person happy. Um, been shown that 70% of people who win lotteries are broke within five years. When you have a lot of things, you have a lot of things to watch. You have a lot of things to take care of. And really, people that travel light are smart. And the true joy, as we've mentioned in other lectures, is being able to share things with people. When you have something yourself and you don't share it with anyone, when you're greedy, when you're evil in what you own and you want to grab everything for yourself, the end, the end becomes is that it becomes empty and useless. It's interesting that before I became religious, I uh, was blessed with success. I always felt that God was paying me off. And I really was living life on, the, on a very simple premise that I wasn't going to have the next world because they had told me that who I was, I would not reach that. So I decided if I wasn't going to have the next world, I would take this world. So I really lived my life based on the premise of having a good time. Life was a party. And I did everything within my power to make that party perfect. I had a yacht. I had a Rolls. Um, party started at 12.30 in the afternoon and ran until 5.30 in the morning every day. It was party city. But the amazing thing was there was always something missing. It's almost like, you know, I hate using saccharin, even though it tastes sweet afterwards. There's an aftertaste. And that's why water is great. There's no aftertaste and it takes care of things. But there was always that aftertaste. It was never perfect. And I really tried to make it perfect. And I didn't understand why it wasn't perfect until I got religious. You know, the reason why we can overcome our Yetzirah, our evil inclination, and be happy and successful is because we join up with someone else. When two people come together, those two yetzatos, two good inclinations, can overcome one evil inclination. And together, that camaraderie overpowers the evil inclination, and you can find true happiness and true success. That makes sense, except there's a problem. When two people come together, you have two good inclinations, but also two evil inclinations. So what's the difference? The ratio is the same still two and two? The answer is no. And that's what I learned. You see, because the evil inclination by its very nature is selfish. So my good inclination not only does it want me to be good, it wants you to be good. And it'll go that extra mile to help you to be good, for you to be happy, for you to be successful, for you to have some joy. My evil inclination, though, <laughs> only cares about me. It's very selfish. There's no camaraderie. This is why Israel can live as a sheep among 70 wolves because all the Arab nations are only interested in themselves. You let a hundred Arabs out of prison, they all go in a hundred different directions. What gives the Jewish nation strength 
is that unity, where there's unity, where people take that Yetzirah and care about someone else. That's where strength and that's where happiness comes from. And since those that are evil are selfish by nature, therefore, they can't really find true happiness because it's always selfish. And it's kind of like cancer. Cancer is such a despicable disease because it's so selfish. Because the truth of the matter is, it's willing to kill itself just to kill the host that it's, that, that it's, that it's infested. If you stop and think about it, what cancer should do is get the person sick and live forever. Just keep them hanging on. But no, it's so evil that it will destroy itself and it dies with the person. Because that's the ultimate evil, and that's what evil's about. But why does, again, but still, people still seem, if you look at it, it still looks like people have many benefits that are evil. The answer is they do. Why? See, we see this world as sheker, as something that's false. This world is only a hallway before the banquet hall that we call the world to come, eternity. Much like the baby in the womb. Baby's in the womb for nine, nine months. It does not want to leave because they see it's the only life that it has. It fights to stay in the womb. We come into this bigger womb and we're here for 70 years plus or whatever. And we fight to stay here because we still don't feel that next step into eternity. And we fight just like the baby to stay here. Really fear of the unknown. But the truth of the matter is what we fight is the greatest joy of all. To move into eternity to our final reward to be given that closeness to God that we all really strive for, which is eternity, something we can't comprehend in this world, nor can the baby understand what's going on in this world. So this world is what we call the world of Sheker, falsehood. The next world is the world of Emmas, truth. So when we do a good deed, God cannot give us reward in this world because it's the world of falsehood. And we know the next world is the world of truth. When we do a good deed, a mitzvah, the only way God can pay us is in the next world, because this is the world of falsehood. He can't give us truth in the world of falsehood. He can give us certain benefits, interests, so we can still have benefit, but that's really just interest. But the main thing has to be saved for the next world, because we can't be paid here, except an evil person. See, because an evil person does not believe in the next world. His truth is in this world of falsehood. So when he does a good deed, and everyone does a good deed, even by accident, that good deed has to be paid for. God is exacting. He pays for every, he, he, he gives, you, get, you get retribution, punishment for anything that you do wrong, and reward for anything you do right. It's not that they balance out. Each deed that you do stands alone. So when an evil person does something good, he has to be rewarded. But he can't be rewarded in the next world. He doesn't believe in it. That to him is false. His truth is this world. So God gives him success in this world of falsehood because that's his reality. That's his truth. For us who believe in the next world, God can only pay us in the next world. It's interesting. They, uh, how do we understand that? There was a story told of a great man, a great Rebbe, who died. And on the same day that he died, when his coffin was being taken to be buried, surrounded by all of the Hasidim and all the people of the town, great throng of people, at the same time that he was being taken to this, uh, being accompanied to the cemetery, his coffin, his body, a very evil man in the town had also died at the same time, and his body was also being taken to be buried at the cemetery. And with this evil man, there were just a couple people just to carry the coffin, the bare minimum. And again, the rabbi with, with great pomp and great ceremony. And on the way to the cemetery, a band of marauders attacked the people that were accompanying the coffin, and everybody scattered. And one chassid, one uh, student of this rebbe, stayed with the rebbe's coffin. And everybody just ran away. And when the threat was over, they all came back to bury the Rebbe, but somehow by mistake, they took the coffin of the evil person, and with all the pomp and ceremony that should have been given to the Rebbe, they took this evil man's coffin and took it to the cemetery to be buried. 
And the chassid was there with the Rebbe's coffin trying to get people to listen. Couldn't get anybody's attention. And it really bothered him. And that night, after they buried the Rebbe and they got everything straight, the chassid, in his dream, he had a dream, he prayed to the Rebbe to come to him to explain what happened. It made no sense. Why was the evil man given this pomp and ceremony? And why was the Rebbe left there? And the Rebbe came to him in a dream. And he said to him that this evil man had set up a wedding for his daughter. And the wedding was canceled. And he had all this food. And what he did was he gave all the food that he had set up for the wedding for his daughter to the poor of the city. And in heaven they had a problem because he had to be repaid for this one good deed that he had done in his lifetime. And that's what happened. And the Rebbe at one time was not quick enough to help a, a widow. So his payment for this misdeed, this little thing that he did that he wasn't quick enough, was that he wasn't buried with the same pomp and ceremony that he normally would have been. And the evil man was given this as a reward for the good deed that he had done, even though he didn't really mean to do it, the wedding was canceled. But rather than throw the food away, he gave it to poor people. So many times when we see things, we don't understand what they are. But we need to know, we need to believe that there's a God in heaven. When someone gets away with something in this world, paying something in this world is cheap dollars. When a person has retribution, when a person is, feels a punishment in this world and he learns something and gets better, that, that that sin can become a mitzvah. That that payment that he's made in this world is a blessing. That's why God has Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur every year for us to pay down the debt. So that when we get to the next world, we're not carrying a whole, a whole bundle of sins that we have to deal with. Our, our, light, our, our load is light. But when it comes to the evil person, the evil person never, never removes it. Then when he comes to the next world, he's over, overburdened with all, that, all the evil that he came with. And it's interesting. They tell, again, a story of a man who was very wealthy and a miser. And he put into his will, he was such a miser that he put into his will when he died, he wanted all of his money buried with him. And when he came to the heavenly court, and they judged him. He had no merits. And they told him he would have to go to purgatory. And as the angel was taking him to purgatory, to Gehenna, to hell, he told the angel, he said, you know, I was buried with all my money. You can take all that money. I'll go to heaven. And he turned around to go to heaven. And the angel said, no, 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 no. We don't accept cash in heaven. So the man smiled and said, well, of course you don't. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out his checkbook. He signs the check. He says, unlimited funds. Take the check. Write in any amount you want. And again, he turns and goes towards heaven. And the angel says, no, no, you don't understand. We don't take checks in heaven. And the, the rich man, the miser, of course not. He, said, he takes out his wallet, flips it open, and all these credit cards. Plastic, of course, you take plastic in heaven. And the angel says, no, we don't take plastic in heaven. And the rich man said, I don't get it. You don't take cash. You don't take checks. And you don't take plastic. What do you take up here? And the angel smiled and he said, we take receipts. That when you've done good deeds on earth, then you come with those receipts. And that's what gets you into heaven. So one should know that when you see people and you think that things are going very well for them, don't envy them. You know, you don't envy an OJ. Simpson. Because the truth of the matter is that the punishments that wait for people that don't receive their, their just due in this world are waiting for them in the next world. On the other hand, all of the rewards that a person d doesn't take in this world. There was a man in this world who died. He was a caterer. And he kept making parties for people even though they didn't pay him. And when he died, I thought he was a wealthy man. He, he was destitute. He had no money. And people thought he was a bad businessman. I thought he was a genius. Because what he did is he had a 401k that he sent up to heaven. And all his rewards he didn't waste in this world. He took them all for the next world. As we say, halavai, that we all, all of us reached the point that he did. The man was a genius. 
So may God help us to see things properly and not see things in the wrong way. You see people that are, that are successful that don't, you feel don't deserve it. Don't worry about it. Just move forward. Do what you have to do and know that you will be rewarded many times over for all that you've done and the way that you should be in the world to come, which is where the true reward really is. Thank you all for coming. God bless. Have a good Shabbos.